BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. And yes, indeed, I'm a West Virginian, and last Sunday I was up at the Apple Butter Festival in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. I'm uh, not from Morgan County, but um, so it's actually quite a drive for us, but we, we go uh, some years, not every year. And I saw lots of signs along the road that said, Justice for Riley. And I was asking people about this while I was up in Morgan County. Uh, what's this all about? And no one was able to tell me. I wasn't really talking to locals, you know, just people from various parts of the states and the kind of tri-state area. So the first thing I did was, was when I got home that day, was I began looking online about what is Justice for Riley from Morgan County. And uh, you learned that this is actually a very saddening case. Riley Crossman was a 15-year-old teenager who was uh, found dead earlier this year on May 16th of 2019. It's now October of 2019, and I was looking for some October updates to see if there was anything, like, super recent in the news. But um, I uh, wasn't able to find anything super precise, and that's very important for a few following reasons. Uh, this thing was covered by um, a lot of high-profile media outlets. CNN did some things about this, although I've said in the past that CNN's uh, kind of coverage of true crime is very, very weak, but I think uh, Dateline apparently also came up in some search results. I saw that uh, Gray Hughes, actually, from Gray Hughes Investigates, did like a very large presentation on this. I haven't watched that one yet because it says it's two hours and 50 minutes, and, um, you know, it's a rather lengthy one. But I hope to be watching that one soon. Instead, I was reading the articles about this, and I found the press conference that had been put out by the Morgan County Sheriff's, and well, just by the uh, Sheriff's Department, because um, although this is attributed to Morgan County, um, it says that on the eighth of, and on the eighth of May, two thousand nineteen. Riley Crossman, a West Virginia teenager, disappeared, and the last text that she sent to her mother was saying that just simply, I'm scared, and then, you know, it's like, that was the last that people heard from Riley Crossman. So then what happened to her? Well, her body was found in Berkeley County, actually, uh, in Berkeley County, West Virginia, along the Tuscarora Pike, a road that I've driven up many times, and... And when we say along the road, I mean, she was near the Tuscarora Pike, but I believe the body was actually found somewhat by a riverside. And then all, this, all the focus began to focus in on the mother's boyfriend, who was named is Andy McCauley. And to kind of help us out with this, we have something from WDTV, a news update. The case for the man accused of murdering a Berkeley Springs teenager will head to a grand jury. Andy McCauley Jr. is facing charges of murder in connection with the death of a 15-year-old Riley Crossman. Investigators say Crossman's body was found on May 16th and McCauley was charged with murder. Some of the ways that they were able to identify him are like, first and foremost, definitely the mother's boyfriend is going to be a big person of interest when it comes to something such as a missing persons case. If her teenage daughter goes missing, that's just the way that these investigations happen. They found some screws near the body that actually were matched to um, the same type of screws that, had, that were found in Andy McCauley's work truck. And they also used cadaver dogs to kind of get alerts in Andy McCauley's work truck that there had been a dead body there. That means that almost certainly um, Riley Crossman would have passed away prior to the dump site. And um, they were asking about this at the press conference, like, was she murdered where the body was found, or was she murdered at a different location? I mean, you got a cadaver dog going on in Andy McCauley's truck. Almost certainly, um, she was murdered in a different location. So they used some very basic forensic science to kind of identify what was going on with um, Riley Crossman. But uh, Morgan County prosecuting attorney Dan James tells Five News the last text that Riley Crossman sent to her, her boyfriend was discussed during the Wednesday's court appearance. James says at 10 at 11.01 p.m. on May 7th, Crossman texted her boyfriend and saying that she was in Andy's room. Well, that's just some even more damning evidence for Andy McCauley. At 11.13 p.m., James says Crossman texted her boyfriend again saying she was scared. Okay, so I misspoke at the beginning saying that she texted her mother. Um, I, I, I may have heard that actually on one of the news reports, but this one says that she texted her boyfriend saying that she was scared. James told Five News that Macaulay died on May 7th and uh, blocked his and blocked the phone number. He says Macaulay call, called her at 3 a.m., 3.34 3.34 a.m., and then 3.52 a.m., and I believe that that was actually somebody um, using um, 
how did they explain this exactly? Like, he's hitting star 67. This is talking about Andy McCauley. He's using her phone to make calls, but pressing, you know, star 67 to block the number. But that's kind of an irrelevant detail at this point. I would just say, though, that this is very typical, and that is very saddening. I mean, this is a very, very saddening case. You know, just a 15-year-old a is kind of murdered by her mother's boyfriend, you know, someone that the mother brought into the home. And what I would say about this is that this is something that does happen quite frequently because I was just listening to the Forensic Files podcast about a month ago. Very similar story. A stepfather murdered his stepdaughter and then dumped the body. And, and in that particular instance, they had just gotten into a heated argument. This was something from the 1990s where she had been talking on the telephone when she was supposedly grounded and says, you know, we took away your phone privileges. The people who grew up in the 90s will know that that was a very common pr punishment, you know, taking away a girl's phone privileges. So they, um, so what they did was, um, well, I mean, they got into an argument and then that led to the death of the stepdaughter. The stepfather lost control and maybe we've seen something very similar here with Andy McCauley and Riley Crossman. I would say, though, that Riley, uh, I, most likely had this incident with Andy McCauley on the 7th of May, and then May 8th she was reported missing, and the body was found on May 16th. They were very fortunate, because after seven and a half days, eight and a half days, the body had gone through intense decomposition, and they were fortunate in the sense that they were able to preserve a lot of forensic evidence, because during the press conference, someone was asking, like, Will he be charged with first-degree murder or second-degree murder or something else? And the sheriff is just like, we can't say that at this time. It depends on what the prosecuting attorney wants. I mean, what we learned about from many other true crime cases is if they can't determine the cause of death, then most likely someone will not be convicted of murder because this is just one of the ways the, that the law functions. They're going to be saying something to the effect of, well, how do you, if you don't know how the person died, how can you say it's murder? This is what the prosecuting attorneys and the defense attorneys battle over. The defense attorneys will love to have something like that in their defense. So it, they were very fortunate to not only find Riley eight days after she passed away. I mean, I know it sounds weird to say fortunate, but just that they could actually get some kind of conviction in the case if if indeed you know everything happens exactly the way that we believe it happened that there was some incident with andy mccauley he murdered riley crossman and dumped the body then it would be very very beneficial for them to preserve that forensic evidence partnered with you know his screws that were found at the crime scene the cadaver dog alert all of this stuff is kind of coming together that he murdered her but at the forensics will need to determine the cause of death, and they said that will not be coming out until sometime in the fall, but it's October right now, and uh, certain things might be privileged for the um, for the media and such. I haven't seen a major update in this, at least, you know, doing the Google searches and the Bing searches. Andrew Yang, the presidential candidate, says no one uses Bing, but I use Bing uh, from time to time, actually. Um, okay, so um, aside from that, what I would also say is that, I mean, this is, this is something where... I mean, I hope that they are able to get the first-degree murder charge on him, and I hope that this will not be something that will be reduced down to manslaughter, that this will not be reduced down to something like culpable homicide because of a lack of forensic evidence. And the other thing is that many times, many times, somebody does not even get found at all. Someone does not get discovered at all. So many times people get, like, kind of, um, their, their remains just go unfound. I mean, look at all the missing persons cases and the disappearances and all the cases out that we have of somebody who is just kind of missing for eternity, an unsolved case, a case that will never be solved because someone was in the woods, their body is decomposed. As somebody once wrote on a forum in relation to the Moore Murray case, a forest can swallow a person. And like they said, after eight days, she was heavily decomposed in the later stages of decomposition. But of course, you know, they had, um, it was very easy for them to identify Riley Crossman because even at that stage, there are, there are a few other things that people can use, like personal items, like, I mean, especially things like shoes and, you know, the um, kind of effects that she would be wearing. Those aren't going to decompose immediately. But I mean, look at all the missing persons cases out there. Look at how the like, true crime just focuses uh, focuses in on missing persons cases. So many of these things go unsolved because, well, I mean, the advanced stages of decomposition, let alone being near a water source. I mean, we've I mean, there have been countless cases, though, when people have been able to recover bodies from a water source, but like in a river or something, especially a running running river or a stream that is kind of like carrying the body to a different location. They were very fortunate to have this type of um, 
this this type of um incident where they were able to recover Riley's body only eight days after she was reported missing because you know it'd be, it's just kind of sickening to think that someone could have committed the murder and then they wouldn't even be charged with murder because the forensic evidence would have been destroyed the most uh, the biggest example of that is the Casey Anthony trial you know like the reason why Casey Anthony was found not guilty of murder is because they were just like the jurors openly said they it was not possible to turn to determine the cause of death and if you can't determine the cause of death then how do you say that someone was murdered if you don't know exactly how they died? What if there is another explanation? Reasonable doubt. And this is what the defense team would really want to hear. But, I mean, I mean, if they had, if it had been one year, if it had been two years or something, they might have lost some very potential forensic evidence. And, you know, it's just, I mean, when I said that this is typical at the beginning, that might have sounded like something that was kind of just like very kind of saddening and pessimistic and just... But at the same time, we do see this in true crime cases, and there are a lot of um, problems and incidents that happen with, you know, um, individuals within the household. And it's very normal to look for somebody who is kind of like connected, like a mother's boyfriend or a stepfather. And I mean, I don't really, I, I would hope that it would happen less frequently, but we see this pattern in true crime all the time. Some incident happens that gets out of control, and that leads to the um death of somebody i mean but we don't necessarily know that because they haven't released an exact motive for um andy mccauley completely it could have been something much more sinister than that the thing that i brought up from forensic files was just like somebody um as we said got into kind of a heated argument that got out of control and the father the stepfather lost control but um this could have been something much more sinister than that and especially when you have a text you know with somebody saying i'm scared that probably says that it's maybe just a little bit more than a heated argument. But we're going to see some new things that are going to be happening with this case as the details come out. And um, first we can say, you know, this um, this is dedicated to Riley Crossman. No matter what happened, she didn't deserve to die like this. No matter what happened, um, it's absolutely inexcusable. And you definitely see that it's the person who did this knew that he was wrong because, I mean, not only was she murdered, but the dumped, you know, just in a rural area hoping that nobody would uh, ever find her or something like that maybe they thought some of those black bears or something would come after her and then and, and people do think like that when they're planning crimes i mean that's like you know you see the stuff especially in rural areas people think that like um certain animals will move the body to various places and it's kind of like it's kind of a disgusting thing to think about but people do kind of anticipate things in that ways in that way but what i would say from that is just that we um can just kind of hope that they will uh, prosecute the case and there, there will be a conviction and I hope they get they get the first degree murder charge well you know um all I can say is god bless to Riley Crossman and um I hope the family gets justice